And now we've been locked down for almost three months. You see, there's an agenda to get us in a particular position. And unless we conform to that agenda, we are going to be punished. We're going to be persecuted. But we've got to be ready for these days. These are the days where God is getting ready to pour all of His Spirit upon all flesh. There's going to be a great awakening, a great revival that this world has never seen. And the church of Jesus Christ is going out of all of this place in far greater power than in which it was born on the day of Pentecost. The devil likes to take what is beautiful, what is good, and to corrupt it. He is a corrupter. He corrupted the human race with sin. He corrupted the human race with death, with disease, with chaos. And even in these last days, he's trying to corrupt people's DNA by doing gene editing. And the same thing that happened in the days of Noah is happening again today. History is literally repeating itself. And Jesus forewarned us, for he said, as it was in the days of Noah, so it's going to be before the coming of the Son of Man. Today the church is looking and praying and longing for visitation, which is good. God always visits his people in the Bible times and, and in history. When people's heart were hungry and seeking after him. But God is not just interested in visitation. God wants habitation. He wants to come and dwell in our temples. He wants to live in us. Not just visit us on a Sunday. What a particular time when we embrace the visitations of God because it brings new life, new hope when he visits his people. But we should come to the place where we are abiding in him and he is abiding in us. For certainly this is what he wants. One of the things that is plaguing the church and the world today is this thing called instability. And Christians are going to find themselves in a position where they're going to be going around the wilderness in circles for years upon years upon years with no progress unless they stabilize themselves in God. Instability is one of the greatest sins of our day where people cannot seem to make up their mind. One day, they believe God. The next day, they believe the lies of the devil. And they're in between a balance. They're not certain. They're not unsure because the, the times in which we are living in is uncertain times. But beloved, I want to tell you, there's one thing that is certain and that Jesus Christ is alive. That he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. And that he's coming back again. If you're not certain about anything, be certain about the fact that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords. And that one day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I want to read from the book of Genesis, uh, chapter 49, when Israel was getting ready to depart the, the earth, and he began to bless his children. He began with Reuben, his firstborn. And in Genesis 49, verse 3, he said to Reuben, Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might at the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. 
But look at verse 4. Unstable as water, you shall not excel. Because you went up to your father's bed, then you defied it, he went up to my couch. So we see that Reuben had all these great characteristics to his person. The excellency of mind, the excellency of strength, a man of great dignity. He was the firstborn of Israel. But then in verse 4, Israel lamented the fact that Reuben was unstable as water. And because he was unstable as water, the result will be that he will never excel. You see, water is liquid. And the word of God tells us that when we have faith, we should believe and trust, adhere and stick to our belief, which is faith. In James chapter 1, when James said, you pray for wisdom, or whatever you believe in God for, he says, do not doubt, but pray with faith, because when you doubt, you are like the wave of the sea, being driven by the wind, and you are tossed, up, and you are carried about. You see, if you want to go along with the times, and the narratives, and and listen to all that is happening via the media. And believe the news reporter. All the governments have set themselves together to lie to the world, to deceive the population. And many Christians today are unsure and uncertain as to what they should do. They have become unstable as water. When they up, they up. When they don't, they don't. And when they neither up nor down, they're just not around. They are moving by feelings and living by feelings instead of faith. When you want to walk in faith, you're going to switch feelings off. You have to disregard feelings. As a matter of fact, the reason why Abraham, the father of faith, had such powerful faith the Bible says he did not consider his body, your body, the, the voice of your body is feelings. And your feelings will change. One day you will feel good. The next day you will feel sick. One day you will feel uh, up to the top of the world as though you are cloud nine. The next day you will feel like you're down in the valley. It's going to be like Elijah. One day Elijah had a, a mountain of camel experience where the of God fell, when people fell on their faces and said, Jehovah is God. The next day, Elijah got a message from Jezebel and he became discouraged. He was poisoned in the spirits. This is one of the greatest men of God that ever walked the face of the earth. Feelings is good and it has its right place. It tells you when to shower, when to sleep, when to eat. But you cannot live your Christian lives based on feelings because feelings will deceive you. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. No Ruben probably was a macho man. He had a name. He was the son of, of Israel with Leah. But one thing he did wrong was that Israel had two wives and two concubines. And Reuben went and he defied his father bed by sleeping with Bildam, the concubine of Israel. And the Bible says Israel owed it. And because he lacked self-control, because he lacked discipline, because he was not focused on the goal of the journey that God has set before him, he began to waver. And he became unstable. He became unstable. He, was, he became a man that you couldn't trust. When he said to run, you've got to stand up. Israel said you are unstable like water. And because of that, you will not excel. 
In my Christian walk, I have seen so many Christians, you know, straddling the fence of indifference. They can't make their minds up on issues that the Bible teaches clearly, like eating foods offered to idols, like whether they should be paying tithes or not. Whether they should be coming to church and, and being in the house of God or staying at home and, and praying. Sometimes they believe everything they hear. And the devil makes sure that he sends his agents out here to deceive the people of God with all kinds of lies and flatteries. The word of God tells us in the book of Daniel chapter 7 that when the Antichrist comes, he's going to corrupt the wicked people through the means of flattery. He's going to flatter them. He's going to tell them what they want to hear. He's going to give them smooth talk. And because of that, they're going to become unstable. Well, you know, once you are saved, you're always saved. Everybody goes to heaven eventually. There are many ways to God. These are some of the false teachings that they're going to embrace. And it's going to be detrimental to their souls, to their salvation. Today I'm going to encourage you that if you are straddling the fence of indifference and you can't make up your mind, it is time to put your foot down and say no to the devil. I have believed your lie for too long. I am going to be on the Lord's side. There was a time when the children of Israel played the heart. And they backslid so many times. Israel is really known as a backsliding nation. They were experts at backsliding. But at this particular time, Ahab was the king, Jezebel was the queen. And through her persuasive personality, and her beauty and her charm, she caused Ahab to cause the entire nation of Israel to go astray from the Lord, worshiping Baal. They had set up temples and shrines and worship to these false gods. And the people were in a limbo. They didn't really know where they stood or what they believed. One day Elijah came and he confronted Ahab. In the book of First Kings chapter 18, glory to God. And Ahab, when he saw Elijah in verse 17, he said, Is you the one that troubles Israel? Now, the one who was troubling Israel was Ahab and Jezebel. But bullies, they have a way that when they bully people, many times they flip the table and then they begin to play the victim. I've cast off devils over the years and I've seen how demons operate. They love to play the victim. So here Ahab was accusing Elijah of being the troubler of Israel when in fact it was Ahab and Jezebel who was corrupting Israel. And then Elijah said, listen, enough of this nonsense. Gather the children of Israel for me on the Mount of Canaan. And we're going to have a contest. When the people came and they were gathered together, together with the 450 false prophets of Baal, it was 21, Elijah came to all the people and said, How long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people answered him not a word. The people very quiet because they had already spoken to one another. They had already made their decision. They would talk about the power of God, how he delivered them. 
from Pharaoh and from Egypt and from the wilderness. And then they would talk about Bea and all the niceties that Bea offers them. But Elijah, he came and he drew the line and he said, How long are you going to be faltering between two opinions? One foot in the church, one foot in the world. One foot you serve in Baal, the other foot you want to serve Jehovah. It can't work. Jesus said you cannot serve two masters at the same time. It's impossible. He said because you will love one and hate the other, you will hold on to one and you will despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. You cannot serve Jehovah and Baal. You cannot serve the Lord and the world. You've got to be decisive. You can't be unstable. You must be sure. You've got to be certain. If you had an encounter with Christ, then you need to turn your back on the world, the flesh, and the devil. Paul says, I am crucified to the world, and the world is crucified to me. I am crucified with Christ. I am dead to the rudiments, the elements of the world. I am married to Christ, and I'm not going to com commit adultery with the world. Jesus said the light of our body is our eyes. I know it is so amazing. Baal worship was pornography. In those days they had temples where prostitution was done and people would go and sit in their worship to Baal and look at the pornography. And Jesus said the light of your body is the eye. If your eye be single, your whole body is full of light. But if your eye be evil, then your whole body is full of darkness. Jesus made it clear, a double eye is an evil eye. If you're a single eye, then your whole body will be full of light. God doesn't want a divided heart. Amen. Jesus cannot be in your temple, and then the Antichrist sits in your temple as well. No, God is not gonna share his temple with idols. You gotta make up your mind. You gotta to come to a place in Mount Carmel. And you've got to decide for yourself. This is something personal. It is not dependent upon what your parents tell you or what your children persuade you to do. A lot of children today are misleading their parents. A lot of parents are misleading their children. You must make up your own mind and be decisive as to who is the Lord. Who do you serve? If you are serving Jesus, then you've got to be committed. You've got to be totally um, dedicated to him. Your heart cannot be divided at all because God does not want a divided heart. Yeah. It's an abomination to him. There are many people in the Bible whose heart will be divided. And in the book of James chapter 4, it says, cleanse your hearts, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Double-mindedness is not a problem of the mind, it's a problem of the heart. It means your heart is not right with God. You have a wrong view of your God. The devil has been accusing God to you and you've been listening to the devil's lie. Satan has been coming to you like he came to Eve and he's telling you, God will love you. God doesn't care about you. Look, he's not answering your prayer. He's not giving you your heart's desire. Come, do my bidding. I'm not going to withhold any excitement from you like he told Eve. He told Eve, he says, God knows the day you eat that fruit, 
your eyes will be open and you will be like God. He was accusing God of depriving the poem of his creation. Beloved, your choice is going to determine where you spend your eternity. When God created us, he made us with the power to choose. And in the book of Deuteronomy, he said, choose today who you would serve. He says, I'm encouraging you to choose life. Every choice that we make is going to strengthen us in the faith or it's going to weaken us in the faith. It's time to stop listening to the lies and to the fables. If you think the government loves you and care about you, there may be some government that does that. But now probably they are assassinated. Governments have been lying to the people all along. And we've seen the lies. We've recognized the lies. And still we want to trust them. Still we want to put faith in them. Why not put your faith and your trust in Jesus? Why not put your hope in the Lord? You know when you put your hope and your faith in Christ, He will never fail you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, James says. Purify your heart, you double-minded. God doesn't want you to be double-minded. It's like the guy who came to church and he wanted to get married. And there was a young girl by the name of Kate, another one by the name of Edith. He loved both of them, like Sparrow. And he was indecisive. And he prayed, oh God, give me cake and eat it too. Let me tell you, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You've got to make up your mind. You've got to be decisive. You can't be in between straddling the fence. If you are lukewarm and if you are indifferent, God says he's going to vomit you. He's going to spit you out of his mouth because you become distasteful. How sad. How very sad. It will be for all people in that day. This instability spirit really is a demon. It's a demon that the book of Genesis chapter 4 calls the vagabond spirit. After Cain killed his brother because of an envious spirit and a murderous spirit, God came and confronted Cain and then put a curse upon him. And then Cain began to lament and bewail the curse that was placed on his life, that he's going to be a vagabond and a fugitive on the earth all the days of his life. A vagabond or a fugitive is a person that is unsettled, that is unstable, that don't have a set place of abode. They are what we call the gypsies or the wanderers. They move from place to place. And I'm not saying that these people are, are wrong. But if that vagabond spirit possesses you, it means you cannot keep a job. You will always be changing jobs as easily as you change your socks. You will not be able to keep a spouse. You will always be divorcing and remarrying. And I'm not saying this might be in any case. But a fugitive spirit and that vagabond spirit is going to cause you to be restless. You're not going to be able to be settled and, and grounded and established in the faith. And it's going to cause you not to be able to excel. You see, 
a lot of people say God is not blessing me but you are not sitting still long enough for God to bless you from the time God ready to bless you you move you run it all over the place chasing after God saying you are a God chaser you here today you dare tomorrow you are not settled, you are not grounded, you are not planted. You know what the Bible says in the book of Psalms chapter 92? It is those that are planted in the house of God are the ones that are going to flourish in the courts of God. You are going to flourish when you begin to be planted. I know this is preaching people don't get and they probably don't hear. But if you plant a tree here today and you are rooted next week and you're planted there and you are rooted and then you're planted there, that tree will die. It will never come to fruition. Amen. That is what the life of a lot of Christians will look like. Amen. They married 30 years and, and they're still wondering did they make the right choice? You made a choice. Live with it. Walk it out. Don't get ready to run every time a problem comes. Sometimes in the church, as the pastor wants to correct you, you want to leave. Listen, if your pastor can't correct you, then he can't be your pastor. Amen. The Bible says correction is grievous unto him that forsake it. Don't leave. We need to humble ourselves. We need to stay put. We need to be still and know that God is God. We need to rest in the Lord and wait upon Him. No man can stop our progress. No woman can stop our progress. Stop blaming this one and blaming that one. You are responsible for your own maturity. You are responsible for your own growth and development. The only way you can excel is when you are not. One stable. A double-minded man, the Bible says, is unstable in all his ways. Cleanse your heart, you double-minded, James chapter 4 says. This evil spirit is going to drive you to become restless. There was a man in the Bible by the name of Simon. And his very nature and name meant a reed. A reed means shaken in the wind. And we know Peter was very impulsive. He was a big coward. There was a time in prayer, Jesus told uh, Simon in Luke chapter 22, verse 31. To 22, he said, Simon, Simon, behold the devil. Satan has asked permission to sift you like wheat. But he says, I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. But when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. Peter denied Jesus three times. He was afraid for his life. He was unstable. His very name means unstability. But thank God when Peter got filled with the Holy Ghost, Peter was a different man. Jesus changed his name from Simon to Peter. Peter means a rock. And you know, after Peter preached for many years and won many souls for the Lord and did a lot of work for the kingdom of God, they came to arrest Peter. He was getting ready to escape. And the Lord says, the Lord appeared to Peter and he asked the Lord, Lord, where are you going? Why have you come? And Jesus said to him, I have come to be crucified again. And Peter went willingly to be crucified. And he said, don't crucify me like my Lord. I am not worthy, but crucify me upside down. And that was how Peter was killed. He was the reed that turned into a rock. I am saying this to say, there's hope for you. There's hope for me. God can change us. 
He can change our behavior. He can give us a stable and a strong personality. I would like to conclude with the scriptures from the book of James chapter 4. And it says in verse 6, but it gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud and he gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So the whole conclusion of this message is God wants us to humble ourselves and say, God, I miss it. I am sorry. Please forgive me. I've been double-minded. I've been unsettled. There's a war that has taken place within me that I didn't understand that it's my flesh and my spirit that were in conflict. And that manifestation of instability is a result of that conflict that is within me. If you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you could simply say, Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Lord, I repent of all my sins. Jesus, wash me into your, in your blood. Cleanse me and come into my heart and save me in God. Make me a new creature in Christ. If you are a Christian and you are double-minded and you are unstable, the Bible says, purify your heart. You can say to God, I am sorry for having a double-minded. I am sorry for being unstable. Have mercy upon me, Lord Jesus. Cleanse me from all my sins, my iniquity, my transgressions. Lord, I recommit my life to you. I want to be not a reed shaking in the wind, but I want to be a rock. Someone you can depend upon. Someone you can trust. Someone that is faithful. You can make a decision to choose to listen to the voice of your heavenly Father. Listen to the voice of the word of God. Listen to the man or the woman of God that he has placed in your life as your overseer, as your pastor. And stop listening to the distracted. If you have to take cotton ball and stick it in your ear when they come along, you, you might need to do that because it's going to cause you your peace, your joy, your stability in the world. And we encourage you to make the right choice. Father, we pray to bless all the viewers today. Cover them with your blood. We ask for revival, power, visitation, God. Let your people be grounded. Let them be settled in the faith, in the truth, in the word of God. Lord, remove everything from their lives that comes to distract them. And Lord, give them the strength and the power, oh God, even as Peter, that when they're converted, they strengthen the brethren. And they don't pull on the brethren with them, oh God. In the name of Jesus, bless each and every one today. And we thank you, oh God, in Jesus' mighty name, for supplying all their needs, healing all their diseases, blessing their homes and their families, keeping them, oh God, safe and supplying all their needs. During this time of crisis, we give you all the praise, glory, and honor, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.